record this. All right, so let's look at this one, 202. This one is kind of fun. And this shows you a defect of AES. AES is the um, primary encryption scheme used by everybody. Uh, the one recommended by the U.S. government, the standard one. It's the fastest private key encryption technique. So let me first, I need to have a folder to live in. So let me uh, see where I am. Okay. Let's. All right. So I need to save this image in that folder. In fact, all right. So I right click on this image and save it. And I'm going to put it in that location, which is, well, if I go to down documents, I can get there from here. Okay, there we are. So, um, there we are. There we are. Okay, so tux.bitmap, save. All right. So now, if I do a directory, ls, I say, all right, I have this file, tux.bmp, and it's that picture of a penguin, which is a bitmap containing solid blocks of color. And now, I've already installed PyCryptoDome, but this is what you have to do to do it. And now, I run Python in interactive mode, because we don't have to really do much programming to do this. Now, I'm going to encrypt that image. And there's a little more to it than you might think. Because if you were to encrypt the entire image file, it would no longer be viewable. So this is the code that imports the AES module. Then I need a key that has to be 16 bytes long so I can use 16 characters. And then I create an AES object, which is using the simplest mode, ECB. This is called Electronic Codebook. And it's the textbook kind of encryption where every block of data is encrypted independently. So now I can read in that image with the same technique that we talked about before. Um, this will define that file, read it binary as F, and then read it. So now I have a variable called clear, which contains every byte in that image. And now I can encrypt it and create a thing called ciphertext, which will be the encrypted version of everything in clear. And the problem is it's going to complain because you have to encrypt things 16 bytes at a time. That's the block size. And the image of the length of this thing is not equal to 16, a multiple of 16. So if I do the length of clear of ciphertext, which I'll just copy there. And then, all right, uh, let's go down here. All right, len of clear. I thought, I sorry, I couldn't make the ciphertext. I got to do length of clear. All right. So the length of this thing is that number. And if you take it modulus 16, there are two left over. So it is not a multiple of blocks 16 bytes long. There are two extra blocks at the end. So we're not going to encrypt the whole thing anyway. There's another issue. A image file, um, let me open it in a hex editor. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I'll use hex fiend. All right. So if I open that file, it is here. OK, I go to here and here and here. OK, here's tux.bmp. All right, this is what an image file looks like. You've got header information here, like the type of image it is, BM for bitmap, and then information about the width and height of the image and such. And then you have blocks of color. And this is CFC, uh, some pattern of C over and over again. That's this solid color in the image. I mean, the image just starts with a lot of gray. So this is the color of gray, a white pixel and then uh, a gray pixel and then a pixel with a uh, bright color in it and on it goes. This is just three bytes for every red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue. That's the colors. So this is the part that actually builds the image dot by dot. 
And if you were to modify this part, the image would no longer open and be a valid image. So I really don't want to encrypt the whole image. I want to skip the first 48 blocks or so, 48 bytes, and encrypt all the rest. So that's what you do here. Um, you create a thing called clear trimmed. And that's going to be the data in clear starting at the 64th byte and going to the end and not including the last two bytes. So this is the stuff I would like to encrypt. And if you calculate the length of the trimmed stuff, that has a remainder of 0 when divided by 16. This is, in fact, a um, an integral multiple of 16-byte blocks. So that can be encrypted in this mode without having to pad it. So we can make ciphertext that is the trimmed version that encrypts all that trimmed stuff. And now we can rebuild the image by including the original 64 blocks unchanged, the encrypted ciphertext, and the original last two bytes of uh, the unencrypted image. And that will create an object which we can view where all the inside color is encrypted, except for perhaps a couple of pixels at the start and the end. So that creates ciphertext, the first original 64 buck, or bytes, then the encrypted stuff, and the last two bytes. And then we make a file called tux ecb bitmap and write it. So now, if I open that folder, which I can do here. All right, I go to, say, Documents there, and View as a List. All right, there. So here's my original image, and I can open it, and it looks like that. And here's my encrypted image. And it looks like that. So this is the famous problem with electronic codebook mode. The original image has blocks of solid color. And all these blocks are identical. So when you encrypt the block of solid color, it changes to some other block. But as you encrypt all the other blocks, they are the same. So you still preserve the structure of the image. This is not what most people want from encryption. It has not concealed the image. It's just changed the color in large uh, regions. So that's the problem with electronic codebook mode. Patterns in the input are preserved in the output if they are large scale, if entire blocks of data are repeated. So there's a better way to encrypt message, the uh, image, and that's the cipher block chaining. So to do that, you have to, there's a new parameter called the initialization vector, which is used by cipher block chaining. So I have to define that. And now I have to define an AES using CBC mode. And now I can encrypt it in that mode and write out that encrypted one with the same process where the first 64 bits and bytes and the last two bytes are unchanged. But the inside is the encrypted stuff. And that will go into this file called tuxcbc.bitmap. And if you look at that one, that's here. That is what most people think encryption should be. That has taken the image. And it has scrambled everything. So all the features are gone. So this is um, the standard that almost everybody uses for AES encryption. But there is a defect in the way this works. And I'll just mention it from the next project, uh, which is uh, this one down here. This is how cipher block chaining works. And why this is what it does. You have the initialization vector and the key. You take 16 bytes of plain text and you encrypt it. Then you take the output of here, and you use that as the initialization vector for the next block. So the output of this block affects the encryption of the next block. And the output of this block encrypts the next block. That means there is a mathematical connection between each block and the block before it. So this results in scrambling the image is much better, because if two blocks of plain text are the same, 
They are combined with different initialization vectors, so there is no pattern preserved, and that's why people like it. But it turns out that this creates another defect, which is the padding oracle attack. Um, and I may show you that one next. We'll see if people are interested. But um, you, you escape one problem and you create another. But it, this is uh, the main technique used by everybody because they do want to avoid this situation where you can still see the image after it's encrypted. That is turns out to be a big problem, and it fixes that problem. All right, I'll stop that one.